What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna be working on the top for Diolante. I bought a few things to hopefully make it work again. That's kind of the plan. One of the things I'm gonna be working on is the pull down motor. If you notice, it is not attached at all right there. There's a little motor that comes up and grabs the little hook and pulls it down. And because of that, there's a nice big draft that comes into the car when I'm driving. And because it's getting cold out, it's really uncomfortable. Be attempting to sew this back on. If you notice, it's kind of pulling up a little bit over here. The top knot all the way down doesn't help with this either. But if you notice, there's the wire that kind of holds it in place. And so the thread's completely gone right there. So this actually goes in between these two here. The plan is to sew from here all the way there and uh, hopefully get this wire back in place. And that should also help with some of the issues that I'm having with water coming in on this little corner, but also this whole thing in general, like it should help with that completely. Pulling it down will stretch this out, which means it'll bring this down, which should help with some of the water issues that I've been having with this car. I bought polyester outdoor thread that's meant for like canvas. And so it's got UV resistance to it and weather resistance stuff. So it should work fine for this application. It should be better than what's happening right now. So let's go ahead and get these two things fixed. I'm also gonna be replacing that headlight right there. Snagged one, my dad hooked me up. He sent it back all the way from Brazil. So I'll be able to replace that because a lot of condensation, as you can see right there a little bit, you know, water gets in here because of the crack. So. I've never done this before, so I don't think it's gonna be that difficult, but yeah, we'll be swapping that one out into there. And uh, I should be able to wash the car after this too, because that top is disgusting. The car itself is kind of in really bad shape in general, <laughs> but I'm hoping to at least correct some of this paint here on the side. And then in a future video, I'm hoping to actually get this painted completely. I might just do the whole car to be honest with you, but I thought about just trying this myself and see if I can get away with it. But yeah, it needs a lot of love. Let's go ahead and fix the top. So if you guys notice, it is completely loose, right? So all the plastic that holds this thing together has just disintegrated so it doesn't hold very well. There's not actually much there to pull down the top itself. Look at this, this whole thing came out too. Holy crap, dude. Jesus, that doesn't help with water. Luckily though, there's drains in the back of this thing, so they did a really good job of at least making that, but dang, there's water right here too. Luckily it's away from the motor, which is nice. Um, I know the motor works for sure because when I took it apart myself and I cleaned it out with some contact cleaner and stuff, put it back together and actually worked until the plastic messed up on me. The problem is, is that I actually forgot to remove the fuse, which I did already, and the motor just decided to cycle and it cycled freaking almost all the way completely out and it broke the plastic. So I learned my lesson already, but that was gonna eventually happen anyways because it's just, you know, it's the original plastic housing that holds this whole thing together. And uh, you know, over time it disintegrated. So let's go ahead and pull this thing out and then we'll swap for new housing. All right, there's also a bunch of washers behind it. I don't know if it's, I know it's meant for aligning the whole thing properly, but I don't know. All right, so let's pull this thing together. Like, I don't know if you guys can tell from right there, but. Yeah, there's cracks there, there's cracks there, there's a crack here that holds this part in. It's missing a bolt back here because, you know, this part just freaking comes out. This is the, the sensor, I believe, that stops the motor from cycling. So when it comes down and it does that, then it pretty much stops the motor and allows it to lock in place fully. So that's busted. Let's go ahead and remove some, the screw's not even, yeah, the screw's not even holding the thing together like at all just completely disintegrated. There's that piece. There's another screw by hand. And that should remove the brackets. There it is, look at that. It's just <laughs> completely just in pieces, man. Dude, this is just, it's just, it's so many little pieces, man. It's just, it's so many little freaking pieces. Like the whole thing is cracked, there's parts missing, like, it's so bad. Here is, let me show you guys the new one. So the new one I think is made out of a different material. Um, it's still plastic of course, but it's not this clear plastic. And so I think this specific type of plastic might be a little more flexible and not as brittle. And um, it even comes with the part in the middle that helps screw up and down already. So it even comes, there's no way there's a motor in here already. 
There is a... Oh, there's a motor in here already. I don't even have to replace that. Oh, that's awesome. I thought I had to remove the actual motor from inside here. I'll keep this anyways, because I know this motor still works, but, oh, that's killer. But yeah, there you go. I just got to remove this little bracket that's attached to the motor itself, and then uh, swap all the parts back on. Let's go ahead and do that, man. Oh, I love that. All right. That took a little bit longer than I was expecting it to, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. I had to do a little bit of modification. Uh, the housing had a little tab on it, just like the old one, but the old one, the little tab was cut off a little bit. It's so I can mount the bracket to the little part of the motor. I don't know if that actually grounds the motor. That might actually, now that I think about it. There is one screw right underneath this whole thing that I had to use pliers to actually screw into place. Even then, I'm still not happy about it um, because there's a slight little play in that little spot and my, my tool just can't get in there because you can't get in through the top. So I wonder if the factory had a small like Allen wrench you know, with a little L-shaped Allen wrench that can get in there and tighten that. So I'm gonna give that a shot. I also noticed that the this little sensor thing that pushes down doesn't go all the way down. I don't know if it's supposed to or not supposed to. So we're gonna figure that out together. Let me remove this tape because this tape, there's an Allen bolt on the little J-hook. So um, that has to be aligned properly. And this whole little thing has to be aligned properly as well. I doubt I'm gonna get it first try. But let me go ahead and clean up over here and then we're gonna drop the cover and then we're gonna see if we can get this thing to cycle up all the way because right now it's not, I don't think, in the right position. I could be wrong, but we're gonna give it a shot and hopefully I get it first try. That'd be freaking awesome. All right, let's go ahead and pop the fuse back in and it should immediately start cycling and uh, hopefully nothing wrong happens. See, so it's gonna start cycling like that, which is really annoying. So it's still cycling a bunch of times. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cover the top and then give it a shot because I know this is kind of an issue. All right, so let's go ahead and pop this down. We're gonna try to grab it next time it comes back up. Oh, it keeps going up and down. So let me figure out how to stop that cycling. All right, so I was able to finagle this a little bit here. Sorry for my improper terminology, but that little sensor that goes up and down, um, I was able to bend it slightly. And for some reason it stopped cycling, which is really nice. So I also know that this little thing here needs to be adjusted. I adjusted it a little bit because I think this helps with the ground somehow, or this connects to the, I don't know, man. It's a weird system that kind of closes itself like it's it's just a really weird system hopefully i know it'll catch but hopefully it'll just uh once it catches and that little thing goes into place that it'll just stop cycling so let's figure this out so i grabbed it nope all right so it's gonna keep doing that again so i'm gonna have to pop it so open the back all right, so that means that this little thing needs to be adjusted because that is no longer cycling. So that motor is working, but it's not stopping it. And I don't know why. So let's adjust it the opposite way. I don't wanna bore you guys. I'm gonna figure this out. Still continues to cycle. I think I'm doing something wrong with that little thing right there. And uh, I'm losing a lot of daylight. So it cycles up and down. So the plan is, to go ahead and fix this is if you notice look this is pretty freaking terrible so we're gonna go ahead and knock this out real quick and then once it cycles completely down i'll just pull the fuse and then i guess i'll just fit try and figure this out in the spring because i just need this car to not be so drafty so i can drive it when it's like 20 degrees out so let's go ahead and fix this stupid thing right here real quick guys after a couple days of fiddling around I think I got it. I'm going to show you real quick. I wanted to put this right in the middle of the video before I ended it because I think I freaking got it. So let's go ahead and pop the rear. Motor comes up. Cool. Let's go ahead and drop it back down. <laughs> I got it. 
All right. So let me explain to you what I did real quick, just in case you're one of those guys. So if you notice in here, so if you notice in there, there's that little tiny lever. It's probably hard to see, but if you own one of these, there's a little lever. I had to bend that lever as close as possible to this thing. So that way this little J hook can actually attach, touch that part when it comes down to stop the motor. I also adjusted the entire motor because I noticed one side had a ton of shims compared to the other. And I wanted this piece to be as close to this as possible because I noticed it was a little too far back. So I brought it forward. I adjusted that a little bit and I bent that thing and it works freaking awesome. Look at this, ready? Success, let's go. A very unsuccessful video so far, but this motor, which is on the driver's side to pull down the front top, this motor fried and um, I had to pull it out to be able to even lift the top up so I can actually get to this thing and sew it in place. So I am really annoyed by this whole situation. These old freaking cars, man. All right, so here's what I have for the top. So I have this curved needle, right? So it should help me get in the really tight spot that is up there. And then I have this stuff here. I don't know if you can see it. Coates and Clark Outdoor. It is black, so it should match the top. It is 100% polyester, but it also feels like it has some sort of coating on it. Um, it doesn't feel like normal thread, which is really nice. So it is meant for outdoors. It is meant for canvas and being that the top is canvas and it's gonna be outdoors and it has UV resistance. So it should work really well. I got it done. It's not the prettiest. I wanted to make sure that I followed the line, so I did that pretty good. The challenge was to make sure that it was straight the entire time and that the wire was tucked in on the inside. And so when I got to the end right here, which is where it pretty much stops that little, that little pocket that I made, it was a really tough challenge to get the needle in there. But luckily the needle is, you know, curved. And so I was able to get it in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the whole top down since it's pretty much all the way there anyways, just so you guys can see what the car looks like. And then I'm gonna install the headlight and then I gotta put the whole thing back together, but I won't show you guys that because uh, that's gonna be a, a whole challenge on its own because I've been out here for a couple hours already doing this, but let's go ahead and bring the top down so you guys can see it. All right guys, quick update here. I'm driving down the interstate here and everything looks awesome. There is no gap on the passenger side above the window anymore and no draft, so it is nice in here right now. There it is. You know, like I said in the previous video of this car, it just looks better with the top down. I think it's a pretty sweet looking car when it's like this. When the top is up, it just looks kind of weird, so I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with that rear antenna right there. That's for the old car phone. Not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet, but We'll figure that out. I thought about getting an old car phone just to put it in there for looks because I think it'd be really cool. I love this car when it's the tops down. It just looks killer. It just needs to be lowered and put some wheels on it and paint and it'll be freaking just... This was going to be pretty tough because I noticed that there are four bolts that hold it in the bottom. So two here, two here, and then one at the top over here somewhere. Yeah, one at the top right here. I was able to stick my hand all the way to the end here and there are no bolts <laughs> on this one. So this headlight has been out at some point and somebody decided not to put this one back on. I will probably attempt to at least put one of them back on just cause I want to make sure it's done right. Oh, looks like this bracket also has to come out here. It's funny how it requires a couple different freaking tools to pull out a headlight, it's crazy. Okay, there's the old one. Big old crack, ooh, it's glass. Yeah, that definitely leaked water bad. Yeah, it went all the way from here, all the way to there. I don't know how it's even being held. I guess just by the glue around the sides here, because it is cracked from here all the way there. Hey, look at that. Nice, man, no more crack. It's starting to look like a self-respecting car. 
ignore all that. Guys, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll keep you guys posted if I figure out this top. I don't know what the heck is going on. I feel like it just needs a little bit of tweaking and it'll be freaking ready to rock. You guys are not gonna see this car for a little while because you know it'll be in the background in some videos because I still have to work on the Evo 10 and the Evo 8. I got some stuff I gotta do to both of them, especially this one with the timing chain. So you won't see the Cadillac for just a little while, but I also have to save up money to buy some wheels and figure out how to lower the thing. So really the next video for this car is gonna be that for sure. So stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoyed the couple videos that I had for this Elante so far. I know it's kind of a weird old quirky car, but you know, it's kind of cool, I guess. Um, it, I mean, it's kind of cool, but I'll see you guys very soon in the next video. Peace.